I have never done anything like this where I've taken state-of-the-art air quality measuring devices and installed them in a bathroom. Mostly because of the COVID pandemic, we had seen a proliferation of new air cleaning technologies to combat airborne pathogen transmission. And one of the technologies that we were looking at was these germicidal ultraviolet lamps that have a peak emission at 222 nanometers. And these wavelengths have a couple advantages. They're very effective at, at uh, mitigating uh, biological transmission. They don't do as much damage to our eyes and skin, so we can shine them directly onto people instead of only limiting it to the top of the room where it takes time for viruses to migrate to. So we can disinfect between people when they're potentially coughing or sneezing. The downside is that as you move lower than 240 nanometers, you start to create ozone. And the, really the question becomes, is that ozone significant enough to overcome the biological benefits of these new wavelengths? To address the concerns from both regulatory agencies and the manufacturers of these instruments, that's how we stepped in. We started developing a standard test method to evaluate electronic air cleaner performance. Serendipitously, I guess, we were in the engineering building and at the time the ventilation in the bathrooms was not working. And so when the custodial staff would install these odiferous urinal pads, um, we would be overwhelmed by the smell. And this occurred to us that this is the perfect environment to test these germicidal ultraviolet lights in. We wanted to kind of do something that was in a setting where people are every day and we could see what real world situations it brings up with the chemistry that's already in the bathroom. So when we would turn on the UV-222 lamps in specific, we would see ozone production going up. We want to understand what is the full impact of these technologies on a thing like indoor air quality. Before we apply these technologies, we want to look at a bunch of different spaces and to see how that they impact different places. And if we start seeing trends, if we can say over time that as long as you ventilate to the ASHRAE standard, so you have adequate ventilation, it may be that this technology doesn't have a big impact on the indoor environment. But we can't make that statement until we look at a lot of these spaces that people are thinking about applying these technologies.